So, welcome to the Born and Create podcast. Uh, my name is Anthony. So, my partner in crime here, Elle Jones. That's good. Mrs. Jones. <laughs> so, our podcast is about entrepreneurship, and the goal is to help people get to their first 10K per month. Like, yeah. That's the goal. Yeah. And then once they get there, they, they can expand and scale. Mm-hmm. So, we talk here about creating, right? Yeah. So, people who are creating some dope stuff, which we are. Yes, so absolutely. So that's why we talk to each other. That's why we talk to each <laughs> and other. And we'll every week. we were born to create. Right, we were born to create. <laughs> so on this episode, I want to talk to you about entrepreneurship, the landscape on how it's evolving, how it's changing, and honestly, how it's becoming a bit easier to get involved in the space without a lot of money or really a lot of knowledge. Yep. And we were talking off camera about uh, network marketing. It's mm-hmm. one of the first things you brought up. Mm-hmm. Right? So mm-hmm. um, share your thoughts on that. Let's dive into that real quick. Yeah, for sure. So... It's no secret, like, unless you live under a rock, that everything is changing. Right. You know, not just entrepreneurship or the landscape of entrepreneurship, but, um, you know, our whole economy is changing. How people are creating is changing. If we look at entertainment and how people are consuming entertainment, you have all of these social media platforms, like everything is evolving and changing. And that really, as a creator, that should be exciting. Right. Because, um, you know, if you are a creator and chances are you are, if you're listening to this podcast or watching, then you understand the frustration of feeling like you have to live in this box, right? Uh, These four walls and the traditional messaging around entrepreneurship is to find one thing, focus on that thing, master that thing, and then maybe you can bring in something else. Um, for someone like you or myself or our listeners or viewers, it's it's not like that, mm-hmm. you know, um, and it's not always for someone who doesn't understand that they're not going to embrace it. But entrepreneurship is changing. The, the threshold to start a business yeah. is very, very low. That can be good and bad. There's yeah. pros and cons to that um, because, of course, you'll have people who launched something and they don't know what they're doing and they position themselves as an expert. And so we talk about the, you know, the infamous 10 K months that everybody talks about and how to get there. And all it takes now is for somebody to say, I've done this, I'm packaging this and offering it to you. And here's a 5 K 10 K price stamp on it. And then that's how they make money. Or you have people who make money off of teaching people how to make money. Nothing wrong with that either. Um, But I think it's important with anything, especially as a consumer, is that you vet the people that you are working with. You look at, like, if they have past clients, look at their work. If they don't have past clients, that's great. If they're honest and they're saying, I'm just starting, but this is what I can do, and they show you. It's just like having a portfolio. Like, when I worked in corporate America, one of my last corporate, one of the last two corporate jobs that I had I was an executive at an advertising agency. When I applied for that job and, you know, granted, I had a friend who was already in the agency who recommended me, but I still had to prove my work. And it was a highly creative role. So I didn't go the traditional route of like creating a standard resume. I created a whole PowerPoint, interactive for, PowerPoint. For what? For, for a job interview? For for the job. Like, I laid out. Who does that? Me. <laughs> Why? Like, <laughs> what, what was the benefit of doing that? It landed me the job. I got the job. Okay. Um, it was the job that I wanted. I got the salary that I wanted. But more importantly, it positioned me as a thought leader in that space, even though I hadn't necessarily worked in advertising in that capacity that I was stepping into. I was at top of mind for the executives because I chose a different approach to how I was presenting myself, my information, my skill set and all of that. And so I think like when you are, whether you're an entrepreneur or you're working for someone, I believe that inherently we all have some type of entrepreneurial gene. You do. I do. I just think, because you think as as kids, as kids, we were free to just create. Mm. You know, whether it was selling books or candy or a lemonade stand or I got Mm. some trading Mm. cards. Like it's, it's the lessons, it's what we're exposed to 
through conversations and experiences that I think kind of chips away at that innate ability to be. Give me, give me an example of that, of the chipping away. Whether it's a parent, okay. grandparent, or family member, or even a teacher. If, if you are exposed to people who don't have exposure to the things, right. you know, and, and it's not to say that as a kid you dream of being an entrepreneur. Nowadays kids do right. because that's that's what they're exposed to. We get to see that on a mass level. Right. But when we were coming up, that wasn't necessarily the case. So you might not have identified as being a, a child who had an entrepreneurial mindset, but you knew that you had these talents and gifts and things that – you could create stuff or you, right. you wanted to you wanted to share it with people and you know you might get some money for it, whether it was to get a new game or a pair of shoes or whatever. <clears throat> but then we have parents and grandparents and educators and other adults who are responsible for, you know, helping to shape us. Yeah. They may not have been exposed to entrepreneurship. And so then it's little things like, oh, your little hobby. Or don't get, right. make sure you take care of what's important first yeah. as if to, so it's those hidden messages that are kind of ingrained over time. And then you begin to believe like the only way to be successful, yeah. the only way to make money, the only way to take care of your family and yourself is to get a regular nine to five job. You want to hear a hidden message? Yeah. So this this podcast named Born to Create has been around for, for a while. A long time. A long time. Yeah. And sitting here. Listen to you speak, I had a freaking aha moment. Mm -hmm. um, and as kids, we're all we we would draw, we would make tents, we would build blocks, we would Everything. take take books and build these towers, these mansions. We would do, we would create so much as so much. kids, mm -hmm. and that's because we were born to be creators. Yes, right. And that chip in the way comes when people kind of stifle, try to put that fire out. Like it doesn't mean anything, but everything that we have, these, these mics, these, these chairs, mm -hmm. these books, they were all once in someone's imagination. Yes. Right. And yes. they, they took the time to bring into life. Mm -hmm. And as kids, if I know it, it, it can be kind of difficult, but if we can like take that, take that creativity and just nurture it and mm -hmm. grow it and feed it, it will, it will be a beast, and and I think that will make it easier for people to, and you mentioned the frustration of entrepreneurship in the Guinea. Mm -hmm. I, I think the frustration will be a lot less if we feed, if if now that we know, we feed our kids, yeah. the, feed their creativity, and then they can feed their grandkids, yeah, our, our grandkids, their mm -hmm. kids' creativity, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But, yeah, I, I had that aha moment, wow, we're, we, we, we truly are born to create. I mean, think about it. And we're both believers, so yeah. we can share this. Like, we believe in God. God was the ultimate creator. Yeah. And he gave <laughs> us that same ability. Right. What did he say? Speak, and you will create your right. Like, you can speak a thing, and it become a reality. So how, like, I think we are really passive yeah. in our understanding of that truth. That's facts. <laughs> Very passive. Even now, it's like, oh, yeah. I was like, wow. It's like, yeah. oh. Oh, okay, like I can really because then it's like it can't be that easy. Yeah, we've been trained to believe that everything has to be hard, right. including entrepreneurship, and that doesn't mean that there aren't going to be seasons or moments where you deal with challenges right. Right. because we will. Like right. that's just a part of life. But they can be easier, but they can be easier, easier, and we can get to the end result or the solution quicker. Right. But most times we don't right. because we make it hard. And to your point, like, I believe our children and their children and their children to come like this is the, a great generation. Any child who has a parent like you or I, mm -hmm. um, they're in a perfect position. Like I'm having conversations with my 16 year old yeah. son about college. Right. And for, you know, most parents would be like, you got to go to college, you got to go to college. And with, you know, with us, we're like, college is an option. Right, right. It's a great option if it's going to lead you to like be clear on what your goals are. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Simple and when you're you. clear on that, because I've always told my I have two adult children, I'm like, don't you get a scholarship? Don't waste those people's money <laughs> and certainly don't waste mine. 
if you're not going to do what you need to do. And also it takes away from someone else who yeah. might have a need, who really wants to go to school to be an attorney right. or in a doctor. Like there are certain careers right. where you <clears throat> need to have a degree in that area. But the way that entrepreneurship and business has evolved over the last two decades, yeah. you don't have to have a degree. Yeah. Um, we look at some of the most successful people and billionaires and they don't have degrees. Right. Right. Maybe they go back later and get one or they get right. an honorary degree, you know, but that it's not a requirement. And I think it's we've got to move away from if we're really going to have these valuable conversations about what entrepreneurship looks like and how it's evolving. We got to have some difficult conversations. We got to peel back the layers of what we've been taught to right. believe and then as we embrace that belief, we're then teaching our kids. Right. But, you know, I'm telling my son, like. He's great at video production. Yeah. He was my as associate producer <laughs> during the pandemic when I did my, my docu-series. Yeah. So he learned real time on the job training in production so much so that when he went back to school, right. he took video production as a class and did really well with it and, you know, plans to continue that. And so he now has a skill set at 16 years old that he developed at 14. I didn't have that until I was like, 20s <laughs> you know what I'm saying I'm still messed around with and it. so if he wanted to yeah. he could have his own video production right now, company yeah. right now yeah. with clients yeah. before he even graduates now will he go to school or does he need to go to school to enhance that skill that is going to depend on his yeah. goals but I'm not going to push him into something <clears throat> just because traditionally yeah. that's what we're supposed to do yeah. or what we've been taught to do I used to be anti anti-college like college sucks yeah. it's not it's not so <clears throat> my perspective got changed on college so mm -hmm. i was talking to uh this a multi-millionaire um and he was saying well this is college so most people go, go to college to get in classes to learn to go to school to be taught get a good job graduate and, and mm -hmm. make money right mm -hmm. he said no, no no when you're in college you go to all the parties all the events because you're there to network with your next or first business partner. You're there to connect with people. The schooling, the, the classes are just extra, mm -hmm. but you go there, have fun and meet people because most people meet at parties, right? And yeah. just say, for example, like in the film industry, mm -hmm. right? If mm -hmm. you're in film school, you're going to get that, that, that dream project or, uh, have that green partnership, not in classroom, but at a party where two people are going to, and you sit and talk and meet. Yeah, yeah. So, so I'm like, okay, go to college, but you know what? Go to the parties, you know, go hang out, you know, mm -hmm. go, go to the bars, be safe, you mm -hmm. know, yeah, be but, safe. <laughs> but go there and network and meet your next, your first business partner because your network equals your net worth. So that's how I see college is benefiting like entrepreneurs, unless you're a doctor, lawyer, we have right, to, right, right. but anything else is just like, you know, go party. And whoever <clears throat> share that with you is brilliant in yeah. that. I wish that I had that perspective right. yeah. or insight when, cause I do, I went to college, yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I went to grad school too. Um, I have my degree. So I think if I would have had that perspective and yeah. insight, my trajectory would have been completely different. Right. Um, but it is true. I was listening to uh, Lisa Nichols, uh, recently and she was talking about this event that she's going to be at and they're they're going to have an opportunity like for the vip level right. or platinum level tickets where they can have dinner with her and and the host yeah. of the event and some other high level people and she said the biggest decisions or the biggest shifts that she experienced in her career and in her business came from dinners Right. Being at dinners or lunches or brunches, it's not, you know, the deals are not always made in meetings right. and conference rooms and through yeah. emails. And so it is, you know, very much so at, at dinner. Yeah, yeah. So with with that person that shared that with you, that's a great perspective. Yeah. Like if you yeah. look. But again, it goes back to your goal. Your What's goal, your goal? Right. Yeah. For me at the time, it was I'm going to be an attorney. Right. So I'm going to study right. law and I'm going right. to do this. And I was so discouraged while I was there, I'm a proud HBCU grad, but I remember having one of my professors tell me like midway through my program, and it was after they discovered that I was pregnant, so I was in my sophomore year, and they were like, you know, you should really consider changing your major. Oh, wow. And I was a pre-law major at the time, and I was like, political science and pre-law, and I was like, why? 
Um, and it's like, you know, because there's not really a great <laughs> demand for female attorneys and especially not black female attorneys. How'd that land for you? <clears throat> I was crushed. I was crushed. Jeez. I was, I second guessed my every move wow. and decision for so long. Um, and I ended up changing. I, I changed. I changed because this was someone that I held in high regard. Um, I trusted wow. that they knew, you know, I, I trusted their insight. I, I trusted that they were looking out for me. And so I switched. I was still a poli sci major, but I switched from pre law to public administration. But I remember graduating and just feeling super uncertain. Like, what am I going to do with this? Because now the, the, the goal had yeah. been two things. I was going to be acting and I was going to be an attorney. So well, I was like Claire Huxtable and Felicia yeah, Rashad all yeah. rolled in one. That was like my, my yeah. gauge, right? Um, but coming out of college, I was like, what do I do now? Because I didn't have that, yeah. that goal attached to that. Like part of the goal had disseminated because it was the goal was graduate with your degree in political science as a pre-law major and then go to law school. Let me ask you this. <clears throat> you said that you graduated with, with a level of uncertainty. I did. So uncertainty it can be OK. Right. Mm -hmm. So but in that position, um, I feel like it wasn't OK because you were kind of pushed off into doing something that you didn't want to. Now, how did. How did that uncertainty make you feel? Because being uncertain is part of growing pains, you know, sometimes, right? Mm -hmm. But if it's something that, in a sense, you can't control, or if you're pushed to doing something you don't want to be, it can be a, a, I guess, kind of like a destructive kind of uncertainty. Yeah. Uh, so how how that uncertainty how did it push you either way? It was destructive in some regards because keep in mind, I told you I got pregnant my yeah. sophomore year, so. I was graduating with a child, right. but I was also graduating with child. Right. So I was pregnant with my second child when I graduated college. Do you think that played a role in the comment that the person made to you, you being pregnant? No, okay. I just feel like that comment played over and over gotcha. in my head. Soundtrack. So then when I was faced with my reality of, Yes, I'm graduating. Yes, I'm graduating yeah. and getting my degree, but I have a two-year-old and one on the way. Yeah. What is my life going to look like, and how am I going to take care wow. of my daughters? Wow. And so that kind of set the tone for every decision that I made. Now, thankfully, um, at a... This thing pushed me off. <laughs> but go ahead. Thankfully, um, my mom was really, really supportive. She always has been. Um, so I've always had her in my ear telling me that she believed in me. She believed that I could do whatever. So that's always been a blessing for me is that while my mom, I guess as I, in my teen years, she had her own entrepreneurial experiences because she was a stylist. She worked in a salon. So I was still exposed to that as I got older. It was the formative years, like gotcha. when I was really young, that I didn't see so much of that. Yeah. It wasn't until I started getting older. Um, but I'm grateful that I had my mom to really just pour into me and speak to what she saw in me that I didn't necessarily see in myself. Um, and then I just, you know, there's something that changes you when you become a parent Oh, a whole and, lot. Yeah. and you look at your yeah. kids and it's like, these little people, <laughs> they depend on me. They need to go back where they came from. That's what they need to do. <laughs> and then my oldest daughter, she's like these big, gorgeous gray eyes. Yeah. And she just look up at me and just be smiling. So I'm like, I got to figure yeah. this out. Yeah. Um, and so I'm grateful that even in all of that, even in being feeling like I was kind of in a destructive place, definitely a place of uncertainty, I had that entrepreneurial spirit to pull on. Right. So I just, I was like the ultimate, if you looked up Hustler in the dictionary, there was going to there be my picture um, because I was just going to, do what I needed to do to make it happen. Yeah. And it has worked for me because now when I am 
supporting my community, when I'm yeah. speaking to an audience, when I'm working with clients, when I'm partnering with people, I bring a great depth yeah. of value to the table because of those experiences, because I've got an opportunity to flex yeah. my entrepreneurial muscles and step into any industry yeah. and really do a great job. Doesn't mean that I don't struggle with my own yeah. internal dialogue, you know, especially if you're looking at how it sometimes feels like <laughs> people just show up and they make money. Right. <laughs> right. Um, but I'm, I am really, um, huge on providing value. Yeah. So anything that I do, I'm going to make sure I do that. Yeah. Providing value is, uh, I think it's, it's super important. Yeah. And, 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 and it's all about, it's all about like how, how you provide that value. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And where we are now in 2023, it's, I believe it's, it's a lot easier to have a, have a business one and then to create the mechanism or use a mechanism or create the content to provide value. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and there's a such thing as I've heard as the entrepreneurial curse, right? Mm -hmm. And that you know so much, you've done so much, there's so much going on in your head, you can't pick one thing. Um, and I've been the victim of, to that, mm -hmm. you know, and mm -hmm. it's, 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 and it's a blessing to know, to be able to speak to any, to anything, but in helping people in mm -hmm. different industries, you know, create what they're creating. But then when it comes down to us picking, like, this is what I'm going to use, but I can use this, but you know what? I can use that and you don't get nothing done. Mm -hmm. Right. Have you experienced that? And then if, if so, how have you navigated through that? Because I know people will tell you, you're doing way too much. You know, mm -hmm. what the heck are you doing? And to a point it's true, mm -hmm. but to another point it's, I got to be a little bit versatile, right? To be able to, be able to shift my momentum. Yeah. Tell me about that. Well, to answer your question, yes, I have definitely dealt with that. Um, and I still do. Yeah. I, I don't think that it ever stops, right. quite honestly. Um, but for me, how I am dealing with it is asking myself really important questions. You know, people say, ask questions. It's not that you ask questions. Right. It's the value of the question that right. you ask. And so the value of the question that I've been asking myself is why does it have to be this or that? Right. Why can't it be this and right. that? Right. It doesn't have to be an either or. But how many that's can you choose to be to make sure like that you're like focus I mean, because I get it you can have more but how many that can that can you add on add to your plate as many as I'm able to manage in a season and each day might look different gotcha. okay. so I liken it to being a wife right. a mom a grandmother a daughter a sister I'm all these different roles to different people our relationships are different so how I navigate my relationship with my children is not going to be the same way that I navigate my relationship with my mom. What's required of me from each of those relationships looks differently. So can I shut down and be like, I'm only going to be mom today and I'll get to be in daughter on Thursday right. or hit me up next month and I'll step into the grip. You know what I'm saying? So that's the next question different. Uh -huh. So, um, so, 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 so that's good, but that's in like, like a family, like, like in one business, right? The family is a business. So yeah. you have your different roles. Mm -hmm. So I mean more of the guy who wants to do e-commerce, real estate, crypto, do Toro on the side, do Airbnb, do like, do like all these different types of businesses. Because what you're, what I hear you saying is that, um, is that you can, you can have like one, like for example, media mm -hmm. in media, you can do a podcast, you can do a docu-series, you can do everything, but it's still under one umbrella. Mm -hmm. but what about the person who who has several different type of things going on um, and it, it's all across the board? How Ever you heard of that? Amazon? Yes. Okay. Okay. Jeff Bezos is a great example of okay. that, in my opinion. Okay. Amazon is a marketplace. Right. They started with books and then it scaled to something else. Mm -hmm. And so you always have a starting point, no matter what it is that you're doing. So you might start with real estate, but then if you look at what is the, I, I always say, look at what's the commonality between those things. Gotcha, makes sense, okay, I like that. If there's a commonality between those things, stop beating yourself up. Right. 
even if there's not a commonality between those things, how do you like everything fits? It all works together. If you go to a grocery store, you're going to buy food. You'll see food. Right. You're going to see cleaning supplies. You're right. going to see if you go to, especially if you go to super target, you're going to see all of these different things from housewares. Target is the brand. You are the brand. Right. We are not monolithic beings. Right. And if you're a creative, you're not supposed to be creating from this. I feel like limiting ourselves and how we create and what we put out into the world because we're afraid of judgment or rejection right. or people mocking us because they're saying you're doing too much. Because I've heard it all. Yeah. Pick one thing. Focus on one thing. And guess what? When I do, I am miserable. And the one thing that I'm focusing on doesn't get the best of me. Neither do the people that I'm working with because I'm <clears throat> operating outside of who I authentically am. Right. Some people are born to focus on one thing right. and that is fine. We need those people. They're very analytical. They're, you know, they, they are very straightforward. Like we need, we need all different types of people but for me, like if I'm just focusing on one thing, my brain is not wired that way. Right. And I feel like it's a slap in the face to God for me to put a limit on how he's going to use me. Right. Well, you don't focus on one thing, but it's one industry. You're in like one industry, right? So it, it's it's media production. No, I'm I'm not any longer. Okay. I'm I'm in multiple industries. So okay. I'm in direct sales, network marketing. Okay. You know, and it's been um, this conversation is liberating in a lot of ways for yeah. me because while I have talked about my entrance into the industry, it's been like a whisper. It's been a whisper. <laughs> it's been a whisper. Why has it been a whisper? Yeah, so it's these whispers of like, that's not a legitimate industry that, you know, or I would somehow be devaluing my expertise. Like people won't take me serious anymore. Is that your conversation or someone else's conversation? Like It's a combination. It, it It's the internal conversation that's fueled by comments hmm. and dialogue that I see from other people. And so... um there's one lady who is in the coaching industry and, you know, her whole focus is to make sure that the coaching industry, you know, whether you're a coach or a consultant, I don't identify as a coach. I'm a mentor, advisor, yeah. strategist. Um, but people in that industry, it's just, you know, it's full of scammers and, you know, it's and she likens it yeah. a lot to MLMs. And so I had to start like doing research because I've had my own past experiences with yeah. network marketing and they weren't good. So yeah. that's also kind of the seed for the internal dialogue. Were they not good because of the company or because of your activity in, in the business? Um, I think it was just, it was some, at the time, and we're talking about more than 20 years yeah. ago. So yeah. it was just really I'm a go getter. So that's yeah. not, that's never been the issue. Yeah. I think it was a lack of understanding, gotcha. like a lack of education about the industry yeah. and me just jumping head in and being like, okay, I'm gonna do it. But then like, Ooh, this don't feel, this yeah. don't feel good. Like I don't like having to, I don't like, well, part of it is I don't like to ask people for stuff. Right. So that's just an internal issue. Right. And th so the fact that I have to, tap into my warm market because that's what we were taught like right. back then go to your family go to your friends try to and you start to feel like you're the you know sleazy door salesman yeah. Yeah. or you know you're bugging people and so that was back then what kind of got in my way now fast forward today and, and if you would have asked me this time last year would i be in the direct sales or social selling industry my answer would have emphatically been no. Right. <laughs> but I am a visionary and I can see opportunity. Yeah. And there are people <clears throat> that I've been very blessed to connect with through social media, through entrepreneurship, um, and different industries that have just opened my eyes to some things. So now I'm partnered <clears throat> 
with uh, a phenomenal woman by the name of Courtney Adelaide. Hey, um, for those of you who are familiar with The Main Choice, which was a female-owned, black-owned hair care brand, multi-million dollar brand. Courtney was a nurse. Her husband is a board-certified medical doctor. Wow. And she started in her bathroom mixing up ingredients and making products to grow her hair out. And she took us, so we talk about the importance of content. Yeah, yeah. She was sharing, this was back in 2012, when she was in her bathroom recording YouTube videos wow. and showing us her audience how she was going to grow her hair out. And I found her by searching on YouTube one day because I was going through chemo and I was looking for videos to teach me how to grow my hair back. Wow. Okay, she popped up. And she popped up. And I instantly fell in love with her content because she was raw and authentic. She yeah. wasn't, you know, it wasn't like all this super produced stuff. Mm -hmm. It was just very, like I felt like I was right there with her and she was helping me. She had that credibility because right. she was a nurse, right? right? So that's where that expertise and that credibility comes in. So I, I bought into it right away. And when she took us on this journey where what started as her just wanting to grow her hair mm -hmm past a certain length turned into a full product and then a full company. And so she started that with $500 and scaled it to a multi-million dollar brand in less than six years and was in over 60,000 retailers wow. nationwide. So she has this blueprint of success and she sold the company, the main choice. Main choice is everywhere, celebrities, TV show, like you name it, yeah. the main choice is a, a, a global brand. She sold the main choice and such, I always say this woman is brilliant. Like I can't even, <laughs> like she is just brilliant. You just have to research and look up Courtney Adelaide. Hey, maybe in the show notes yeah. we'll have her name and stuff, but she's just brilliant. She has such a brilliant mind. And so she sold the main choice and she started another company that she actually had created like in her mind back when she started the main choice, but she didn't do anything with it. So when we talk about yeah. like sometimes you can have an idea for something else right. or a skill set for something else, but it's not time it's not to time launch yet. it yet. Yeah. And that's what she did. Um, and so then she launched Obely. And Ovaly is like the black that. Procter and Gamble. Yeah, yeah. So if you think about Procter and Gamble as um, this parent company, and then underneath you have these different brands. So under Ovaly, we have the Cool Coffee Click, Foolproof Body, Pop Trishional, and now the Main Choice, which is why I laughed when I said she's such a brilliant mind. Yeah, yeah. Because remember, I said she sold the Main Choice, yeah. but now she's got the Main Choice under Ovaly. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. So <laughs> that's, that's, that's brilliant right there. Brilliant, brilliant. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and so for her, but before she brought the main choice in, she had foolproof body, cool coffee click, and pop trishional okay. as the brands. And they were retail brands. And she shares the story about how God woke her up like three o'clock one morning and told her to change the entire business model. Mm. She was like, what? She was like, change it to a social selling business model. Wow. And we just had our launch in Orlando in January. And she was just sharing the story again about like how, but she went more into depth and she was just like, I wasn't really familiar with, you know, social selling, yeah. which is AKA direct sales, network right. marketing. They all have slightly different right. business models, but they're still very much in the, in the same industry. Um, and so She's like, I'm, you know, on her phone in the dark, trying not to wake her husband up with the bright screen on her phone. And she's like, I got to I got to look at this. And so she started looking at, OK, what's social selling? Social selling is like, you know, partnering with your community. OK, I do that. Like building community. OK, I do that. You know, serving other people. OK, I do that. Creating great quality. Pro OK, I do all of these things. Why wasn't I doing this before? Yeah. And so she took it to her team. And they were like, yeah, you should have been doing this. Right. So for me, and, and her 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 uh, mantra is, and I hope I say this right, don't bother to show up if you didn't come to disrupt. Oh. 
I guess it's time to disrupt then. And I resonate with that wow. so much. Don't like, bother to show up unless you came to disrupt. Yes. Or yeah. you could switch it around. If you didn't come to disrupt, don't bother to show up. Either way, it sticks. I'm using that. <laughs> it sticks. Just make sure you quote her. <laughs> but I'm, I'm a quote it, her. It sticks. And it like and because I was a customer of hers first. Yeah. With her retail business, and I've used her products and had great success with them. Even with when she launched Oberly, I was buying the cool coffee, clicking like everything that she I was already using yeah. as a customer. So when she came out and said that I have an opportunity to work together, because the other thing that she was doing, both with the main choice and when she first launched Oberly as a retail model, was that she's always giving back to her community. Mm-hmm. She's always giving back to people who are in need or, you know, she would have these Oberly pay my bill uh, sweepstakes that she would do, like these giveaways where people could submit a bill, whether it was college tuition or for their books Mm -hmm. or, you know, paying for their kids, like whatever it was. And she was always doing that. So she's always had a heart to give. And and so when we talk about like how the landscape of entrepreneurship is changing, this is the blueprint for me. Like what she's right. done with both of her companies and these brands, it's been the blueprint for me to say, I don't have to stay in one thing. And it doesn't mean that I'm abandoning being a personal right. brand strategist. It doesn't mean that I'm abandoning right. being a storyteller or a, a producer or a director. I'm still doing all of those things. But within that, you, but within yeah. that, I'm doing this. And my mm-hmm. audience already knows that about me because I've yeah. already taken them on it. The, they know that I'm passionate about beauty yeah. and lifestyle and wellness. It's been very much a part of my personal brand. Actually, my personal brand launched yeah. that way. So it's not unfamiliar yeah. for my audience, but I was allowing what people's idea about a specific industry yeah. to kind of cause me to shrink. Because I didn't want anybody to be like, yeah. oh, if she's involved in that, then she must be bad off or she, you know, it, it and, and no one could be saying yeah. that. But that just was the internal yeah. dialogue that I've been dealing with. And so now partnering with Courtney and this social selling model has been a game changer for me. It's allowed me to do a few things that I feel are really important for anybody who, whether you're pro direct sales and network marketing or social selling or anti this is what I would offer is that as entrepreneurs we talk about how challenging things can be and a lot of times we're operating in a silo like by ourselves yes we'll have collaborations but for the most part unless you've scaled to multi-millions and are able to afford a team that you can pay a salary for you're operating by yourself you're solo Um, and for me as a creative, that doesn't work well. It's not even good for my mental health. And I didn't even realize to operate solo, to operate solo. Like I have times when that's what I need to do and I enjoy doing it and I'm great at it. But for that to be like consistent across the board. And I think I've shared that with you because over, you know, the past 12 years, we've worked on things together and there was a period of time that we hadn't seen each other. And when I saw you, one of the first things I said was like, man, I miss that collaborative right. piece because I feel like I'm more creative. Yeah. I'm more free to express myself where sometimes isolation is not good for anybody long term. Yeah. No matter what you're doing, whether you're an entrepreneur or not. Um, and so for me, this allows me to be a part of community regularly. It allows me to not just flex my leadership muscles, but develop my leadership skills in a different way. Um, it also allows me to to be challenged with selling because that's something that I've always yeah. struggled with. And, you know, we'll I've been that, very, yeah. very yeah. transparent about that and just selling and being able, you know, and everybody, I had somebody tell me recently, I was talking to them about Oberly and they're like, girl, you're a great salesperson. I don't know what you're talking about. And I'm like, but just the thought and it, you know, it's, it, you have to deprogram and shift how you see selling is serving. Yeah. Cause if you have something of value it's and Yes, that's the thing. I mean, if you keep it for yourself, then like you're you're doing a disservice to somebody whose life that can change. Correct. Right? Correct. So 
I mean, it's not really selling. It's like I'm offering something of value to you. Of course, it's a, it's a price tag to you, mm -hmm. but this is going to change your life. If I keep it to myself, I mean, I think I'm doing you more of a disservice than trying to sell you. I'm just passionate about what I'm doing. Right. right? And that that's one of the things that Courtney talks about with the products that we offer is they are a solution. So yeah. it's not just about creating a product. Yeah. It's about this is a need in the marketplace. Right. And this is a solution. And it wasn't until I partnered with her in this business that I even developed the mindset. So being in this business has helped me in my other business. Yeah, of course. Right. Whereas before I kind of be like, oh, I can't put that price tag on this service. We've talked about yeah, like me yeah. undercharging for right. things. And then it's like, I know it's valuable, but still right. and so even like this business has helped me in a lot of different ways the other thing or a final thought on this part is that with this business and and this is for the pro and the anti you know network marketing direct sales people is that as a personal brand whether you're a coach a speaker a teacher whether you create a course it doesn't matter right you are the product and I've been very, very transparent and open right. for, I can't tell you how many years about my health journey of living with lupus. And one of the hardest realities that I've had to face as an entrepreneur is seasons when I'm not physically right. able to work. It's when a team comes in. And if you don't have a yeah. team, kind then of, guess kind what? Of SOL. You SOL, you're not making money. Right. You become a <laughs> bottleneck in your business. And I think whether you have a, you know, a health condition or not, yeah. some people are so stuck on they got to be the one in the bit. It's right. got to be my name. It's got to be my face. Right. I got to get the right. And you become a bottleneck in your business and you don't even realize it. So you are the end product. And if you are all, even as a producer, yeah. as a podcast, like we are the product. If we don't show up and operate in the skill set that we've been hired mm -hmm. for, guess what? AI will take over. It'll be AI stuff. That would be really interesting. <laughs> <laughs> That's a whole other conversation right? for another day. But, you know, so my point is, is that you have to diversify just like you have a financial portfolio. Yeah. Your business portfolio, your personal brand portfolio needs to be diversified right. as well. If you're a media entrepreneur, it needs to be diversified. You should not be putting all of your eggs in one basket. So I'm, I'm still on this journey, yeah. right, of not even so much anymore how do I integrate the two because they fit. Like, again, it's not that I'm introducing something new to my audience that they're not already familiar with. It's more me just like... I don't care what people think. Me being in network marketing or direct sales or social selling doesn't devalue who I am. It doesn't devalue or take away from my, my credibility or anything. And I just would encourage those that are listening or, or watching, there's no linear journey to no. becoming an entrepreneur or scaling as an entrepreneur or being a successful entrepreneur, you've really got to get clear on, you got to have a great sense of awareness Facts. of who you are. We, we always talk about the importance of storytelling. Um, and it's okay to shift. It's okay to introduce new things. Yeah. That's something that's that, um, uh, Tony Robbins talks about. He's like, if it's not working, change your approach. Yeah. Change your approach. Keep changing your approach until it works because it can't work because it's being, it's being done in the marketplace every day. It can't work, but you just have to just change your approach and find out how it can work for you. Absolutely. Right? <clears throat> Absolutely. Yep. And and so, you know, I, I don't know if we we covered everything, but, I you know, it was a lot to get out. But yeah. entrepreneurship is changing. <clears throat> there are a lot more opportunities. Lot it's more. Long gone are the days even with entrepreneurship where you had to start a brick and mortar business right. or if you started out as a coach or a consultant, that's where you have to stay. Yeah. Especially in this economy. And, and it. You know, we can get into like who your ideal client is and all of those yeah. things. Whether you have money or not, people are becoming more discerning right. with how they spend their disposable income. Right. 
And I think that it would be a detriment to anyone who identifies as an entrepreneur yeah. not to look at the infrastructure that they currently have and yeah. see how they can better serve. Yes, about serving. Yep. The people that they've been called to serve. Yep. And if that means starting something new. Yeah. Do that. If right. it means taking what you already have and like Tony Robbins said, taking a different approach to right. doing that thing, do that. No one can tell you the right way to do a thing. Yeah. And I think that's where that's a problem with social media mm -hmm. is that it's great because everybody has a voice, but sometimes some voices are so glaringly <laughs> loud and wrong. Right. And it will affect people. And yeah. I've been, you know, I'm very transparent in saying, like, I've allowed. Yeah. And it didn't matter. Like, you got the Gloria Maytho Bankses and the yeah. Stormy Wellingtons and you know, love or hate these people. Yeah. You know, you got all these people who are successful in this industry. And I think at the end of the day, you have to, just like you would vet a realtor or a life insurance yeah. agent yeah, or a <clears throat> doctor or a therapist or a coach or a consultant, mm -hmm you need to vet the company that you're looking at if you're considering this industry because you only you don't need to look far yeah. to see the reality of things and so Courtney is somebody that I trust she's she's an astute and excellent businesswoman she's very transparent I've seen her do it multiple times and I think the 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 final thing that was a yes for me was that she didn't start in the industry right she started in retail and her thing was i've already partnered with retail yeah i've already proven myself in that arena why not partner with the people who have helped to make me successful yeah i'll get behind that a thousand percent on any day awesome i hear that well as always thanks for having real conversations i know every time we hook up we have real conversations yep. and um I hope I hope it helped people grow and learn and to value who they are, what they are, and what they can accomplish and, and create. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Anything in closing? You want to say bye, to everybody? Bye, y'all. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, I'm I'm looking forward to this. Uh, yeah. you know, I don't know, you know, we're we're doing something different and new. We're every, and every, fun. Week. Every, every week, every week, um, so these conversations will continue, but. It, it's always my hope that when I'm opening my mouth, yeah. it's it's valuable and it's something that will help, even if it just helps one person. Gotcha. I'm cool with that. All right, cool. All right, guys, we'll see you guys. Well, see you and hear you next week. So, bye bye. Bye.